Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor project for you. Today's project, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own pattern paper using just a couple of, of stamps and a die to cut out these pieces, and we're going to piece them together like a quilt. So first I'm using this retired die set from Stampin' Up. It's just a star quilt, and it cuts all the pieces out for the quilt, or for the, for the star. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create some red, white, and blue paper so that I could make this star quilt kind of festive for the 4th of July holiday. So I took the die and I just made tick marks on the paper so I could see where I wanted those, those die pieces to be. So I'm going to make a pattern, but I wanted to stay within the square so that um, I'm going to do this bottom right hand corner with red and then the other three quarters with blue and green. We're going to use olive green too for the leaves, but I'm going to, this one is Crimson Lake and that's how I'm making the red flowers and then I'm going to use a Prussian blue for the blue flowers. So I'm really trying to just show you here, and this is in real time, I'm just creating little flower bunches by taking my daisy bunch stamp and then just stamping it four or five or six times in a circle. Now the, the tighter the circle that you make, the smaller the flower. So sometimes I go real small, sometimes I go big, sometimes I'm only using part of the stamp, not the whole stamp. But I'm just putting a few blooms here and there so that there'll be some color within the star. I didn't want it, I don't want it to be all green, I want it to be mostly red. So I'm just going to put a few things here, a few here and there. And then I'll take my brush, dip it in water and pinch it off. And then I'm just going to soften those lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to come back in here and use a, um, oh my gosh, I forgot my train, I lost my train of thought. We're going to come back in with the greens and we're going to put them all around so it's going to look like a little garden. And then once we cut all those little pieces out, you'll see that now it makes a really cool random, a random pattern so that when you go to do the quilt, it's a really cool background. So this first one I'm going to show you, I'm actually, because there's so much, I'm going to, I'm going to do the red and the green in real time and then I'm going to speed up through the, the next one which is the blue. I'm going to speed up through that one and because you, you get the idea, you don't need to watch me do this 4,000 times. I would, I couldn't even go get through it when I was trying to edit the video. So I, I knocked out some of these, um, the last two panels I knocked out. I didn't actually include in this video because you don't need to watch me do the exact same thing over and over and over. But I figured this would give you a good idea of how I came, how, it, how this pattern came, came about. So I'm just softening those lines. I'm bringing them out a little further than what I stamped just to make them really look watercolory. And now I'm going to take the vine and I'm only going to ink up that top half of the vine. I'm not going to ink up the whole thing with some olive green. And then I'm just going to go on either side of each of these little blooms and I'm going to stamp it as many times as I feel like I can get. You really want to get a nice variation between dark and light so that it gives you that depth that we're going to that we're going to need. And you don't want to put it too many places and and not have any white space either. So, I tend to just do a couple on each side of of each bloom and because there's so many, you'll notice that it does fill in the background nicely. And this is, so this is an awesome way to use your stamps to create a pattern background. You could even do a pattern and then put another focal image on top of it. When I got done with this quilt, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. So the, the fourth happy fourth was nice and easy to die cut and it didn't take away from 
the background, which is the focal point of the card, really. So it was it was hard to even put anything on it to cover any part of it up. So I'm just continuing to ink up my stamp, stamp it, and then move on to the next section. Now you notice here, I decided to turn my stamp upside down and kind of go around those blooms and keep the paper stationary. You'll notice in the next set with the blue that I actually am moving my paper around and that's actually easier for me because then I can put the blooms exactly where I want them or the leaves exactly where I want them. And sometimes when I, when I rotate my stamp, it kind of spirals, so it doesn't really give me the look that I'm, I'm trying to achieve. But I still like it. I still love it. I think it's still beautiful. It's just you get a different look when you move your paper as opposed to moving your stamp. Now you notice that I, I am even stamping over and into the blooms. That's because if you look at a, a flower or a plant or a bush that has like, I think it's rhododendrons, that you can actually see there are some of the leaves that are actually growing through the blooms. And I think that's a really cool look. I think it really makes your, your painting come to life with just random leaves here and there. It's amazing how just a few little blobs makes a difference when you're doing here. All of a sudden now you have this little garden and it looks so cool. So now I just dip my brush in water again and I am just going to put some color, some water on these leaves. Just softening them just slightly. I'm not I'm not hitting every single one. I'm just hitting a few here and there. And I'm not stabbing at them. I'm just softening them up with a little bit of water. Now, sometimes my brush gets dry or sometimes it gets a little too much color so I want to clean it off. But remembering not to, not to get rid of those white areas because you're really going to need those to give this some nice depth. And it doesn't take very long at all. As you can see, it's only been five minutes and we already have this beautiful pattern background. You can do it with all kinds of colors. You can do it with just one color. You could even do a monotone, a monochromatic look where you did all sepia or all black or even all of a, of a, a, specific, a specific color. That would also look really, really cool. These quilts, these quilt backgrounds take quite a bit of time to plan. Once you get a plan down, they seem to come together pretty easily. But it's still a challenge for me because I'm not a quilter. My mom is a great quilter, but I am not. So this appeals to me, I think, because it's a little more challenging to try to figure out what the pattern is and what you want it to look like at the end. So I might do a few more of these just to see how they come out. Now this background, I actually, this watercolor piece has a piece of stick it behind it. So that when I die cut, as you can see, I already die cut them out, but when I run that through my die cut machine, all those pieces will have adhesive on them. I didn't want to have to waste my time when I went to go make the card itself. I didn't want to have to be gluing each piece. So this way, I can just peel it off of the thing, of the backing and place it down on my paper. Now you can see there I'm just put all my blue down and I was just seeing with with the dye to see if a lot of those blooms are showing through the windows and if not I would have added a few more but I guess I was fine with it because now oh no I switched that's why I switched to the stamp that has the, the little dots just because they were smaller and I wanted more color. So I put those, just a few of those in between. 
And now I'm just adding water to my blooms. As you can see, I'm Prussian blue is very, very strong. So I'm cleaning my brush a lot and trying to hit the little ones, the lighter ones before I hit the darker ones so that the color isn't too intense for the whole thing. So those are all my blooms. I don't know why I'm holding that up like that. Now I'm gonna go in with my vine again and just do the same exact process I did on the other side and just really add some, some greens to this. Then I'll repeat this entire process on that whole other side, and, but it's all gonna be blues because I needed more blues than I did pinks. And I had pre-cut, used my dye to pre-cut a piece of white watercolor paper. And those pieces are off camera. So when I go to assemble them, you'll, you'll see me pull from them. <clears throat> so now, when I, when I finish this piece and I go to die cut it, you'll notice that there's some sticky notes. And that's because after I die cut all the white ones and realized that I had to spend more time trying to piece them together to figure out which ones went with which ones or which ones went where, it was hard. So as you can see in the red one, there's a piece of yellow sticky note behind it. It's a full size sticky and I just placed it on the back. That way when I go to take the, the frame, the die cut frame off, all the pieces are stuck to the sticky note and then it actually helps with taking off the backing too. I struggled a little bit in the video with taking the backs off the white ones because I had to kind of peel them off with my, my craft pick. So you see here, I'm putting the sticky note on the back. That little square had fallen out, so I just picked it up and put it back where it belonged on the piece. So now I'm gonna die cut the other two and I'm just kind of moving it around to see where I get the most color. So all four of these pieces are now cut. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna peel away the frame behind it. I was gonna use it but then it ripped so I didn't get to use the the outline of that this one right here. So I had a little a little trouble starting it, but once I got it started, it was no problem at all just to pull it away. Jennifer McGuire shows you how to do this and it's great. It's like the perfect way to keep your stuff and your pieces in the same spot to transfer them over if you're gonna do an inlay piece. See, I kind of gave up the backing came off of that one. Now you see I'm taking that. Now you see all those pieces are stuck to that are stuck to that sticky note and it's perfect. So all I have to do is pick them off and start placing them on my paper. So now I'm taking my T-square and I just wanted to find out where the middle of that paper was. So as you can see I'm just measuring and then I'm going to find the exact center. As a guy, it's just going to be a guideline for me. Now I'm going to build my star, the beginning of my star, using that the pink pieces on the sticky note and I'm going to line the points up with that with that um, dot because that's the center of my paper. Now you'll see I'm going to go completely, I'm going to go off the paper eventually which doesn't really matter because I'm going to actually cut it in the end anyways. So now I'm just going to piece these together, placing them right up against each other. 
and continue to go in a circle until I am done. I promise you I will speed through. I wanted to do this part for you in real time, in real time, but I did speed up the rest of the quilting process because I just didn't want to subject you to that type of boringness. <laughs> it's not so boring when you're doing it, but to watch it, I can't imagine you'd want to sit through. Um, pro this card probably took me a good hour to do. And this, so the sticky, the stick it adhesive is very awesome. It's awesome because it's actually repositionable. And before you actually really press it down, you have to press it down with like a bone folder just to make sure that it's completely sealed onto the paper or completely adhered to the paper. So now here's where you'll see I sped it up and I'm also trying to take the backings off of these. Now I put them down and actually see I peeled it up and turned it around. which is why I used the stick it, which is great, because other adhesive, you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd be ruined and then I would probably be very upset because this card took a while. So I'm try what I'm trying to figure out is what's the best way. I figured if you turn them in towards each other, they were skinnier, so I made sure that all of all of my points were pointing to a big, making a bigger area in the middle. It just gives a different look. If you did them all with <clears throat> them not opening the big way, then it would be a very, a tighter, I think it would be a tighter star. So now I'm just going around and I wanted one layer around the star of white. Now you can see there I'm using my my little sand racer. I must have got a little bit of something on my white pieces. Probably from my hands. So now here's where I'm taking the bone folder and I'm just making sure everything is really adhered to that piece before I move on to the blues. So now I'm going to do one section of blues and then we're going to move on. I didn't sh Oh, I might have showed you how the whole thing came together, but I, I sped it up quite a bit. I used my bone folder there on the back of the, the sticky note to try to get some of that, stick it to stay onto the post-it note and not onto my pieces because they were getting stuck and I was having a hard time with them. So this way they came off the sticky, the sticky kept the, the backing and made it easier for me to just pick those pieces up. I wish I had done, I wish I had figured that out before I did the white pieces, right? <laughs> I would have had a lot less time wasted trying to get the backings off that, each piece. So now I went around and did that one pattern. Now I'm going to go back around and I'm gonna fill in some of those areas with the other pieces that I have. And I'm just basically just fitting them wherever I can. I'm kind of, I was kind of off camera there as you can see, but I'm really just going around and trying to fill in the next layer. Now I'm going to go in and just add some more pieces. And it's great if you use them just random like this because it's the randomness and how they don't fit together that makes the project so cool. Because you're really not taking from the same, not necessarily the same piece that I did and all the, the patterns way different. So it really, I think, gives a great, a really great look. And I'm just, so I'm just trying to use up all of those pieces that I cut. This reminds me of my, my quilt on my bed, the colors anyway, that my mom made me. So now here I'm trying to fiddle with how this, how this is going to work and I really didn't like it so I picked them up and moved them.
And I'm just going to try to fill them in. I'm trying to keep it into triangles or so that it's easier to fill in later. Because I'm going to cut some of those things that are flat. The ones that are on the edge, you'll see here I'm, I'm cutting them off. And I'm actually using them to fill in some of those smaller areas. Because I want that entire background to be full. So I'll do that a few times. I'll use some of those leftover pieces if I can, but then I also use some of the some of the leftovers from the sides. Again, it just makes a really cool look when you are using all of these different pieces and not in the same areas. So here I'm just kind of measuring, seeing how far I need to go, if there's any pieces that are missing that I need to fill in. Just make sure I get all those little areas. So you see we have everything down now. Now I'm going to take that bone folder again and I'm just going to really push some lot of pressure on all of those pieces because especially those little tiny pieces, if you don't squish those down, they're not going to stay in place when you, when you mail this card. So now here I was just looking for placement. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut out the four and the, the little flag. Those are also a stamp and die set from Stampin' Up! that is no longer available. And then I'm going to take a piece of black onyx cardstock from Gina K Designs and I'm going to use some Versamark and the TH I'm going to emboss onto that black cardstock and then I cut it out with the die. Now I'm just using the Happy from this Gina K Designs set. It's a long sentiment, but I just liked the way the Happy looked and it fit perfectly on my four, so I embossed that as well on the four. Just wanted to make sure I got it covered pretty good and then heat it up and put it so I could put it on my project. I ran the background, which I didn't show you, but you can see that there's a little bit of a quilting on the background, I just ran the whole piece through my machine using a quilting um, embossing folder. As you can see, all the white, the white really shows it the most, all those little dots. That's just the design from the embossing folder. Now I'm going to take this entire piece and I'm going to place it on top of a four end. I'm going to say four by five and a quarter black onyx um, mat. And I'll, so I'm just measuring it out to make sure it's the way I want it. And I'm going to place some Gina K Designs glue on the back. This is some, this is a really strong adhesive. I love it. I need to get more. She seems to be um, out of it every time I go to buy some more. So. Hopefully next time I go to buy it, they'll be back in stock. So now you can see that entire pattern that is created with that embossing folder. So because there's a lot of little creases and everything, I thought that a, a liquid adhesive would, would be better. Plus I like the fact that I can put it down and I can move the card around because I don't always get it in the right spot. And if I'm using a, a, tape, rate, a, a tape adhesive, if once I put it down, I can't move it. So I like the fact that I can put this down and slide it around until I'm per happy with where it is. As you can see, I'm going to move it around right now. And then I can make sure it's exactly where I want it. And then I just, you'll see me put it a acrylic block and just try to press it down just for a few minutes until it dries. and kind of flatten it out. And then I just adhered the entire panel 
to a regular A2 note card. And that's it. That's the entire piece. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know everybody had wanted a video from my last one and I didn't have the time to get that up and I hadn't recorded it because it was my first card, but I hope you enjoyed this one. If you, if you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful day.